Well, you know it's a conservative when, when you open up with the Pledge of Allegiance and the Star Spangled Banner. Thank you. And it's also nice to be in, in God's country where God and country you can say together. So thank you. You know, Interior, I had, I had no expectation of being the Secretary of Interior. Uh, but when you get in the office, it's a little different. Every time I go through a park down, I look to make sure we're in the right uniform and the bathrooms are clean. But Interior is 12 time zones. It stretches all the way from Virgin Islands to Palau. It's about a fifth of the territory of our great lands. And to be the steward of our great lands is an enormous responsibility. But our great lands, our treasures, belong to us. And the, and the difference in the Trump administration is this. Believe it or not, I work for you. So Interior, is that Interior should be the trusted steward. We should be the nice department. We should be the department that says, yep. And the challenges I face is this, is trust. Is that it disturbs me when we don't trust our government. And how far we've come from the government that I grew up in. The government of Reagan. When the president would say something, you knew it was true. When our government was on our side. So our president, with the exception of me, I think has picked an enormously talented cabinet. And I can tell you, I sleep better at night when I know that Jim Mattis, who I fought with in Fallujah, is running our military. And I sleep really good at night when I know that General Kelly, now Secretary Kelly, is guarding our borders. And I know my pocketbook sleeps pretty good when you have Mnuchin and Wilbur Ross guarding my checkbook. But getting back to trust, you know, where did America turn where we don't trust our government? And how do we get it back? And a lot of it is working with local communities, working with our state, looking at the relationship between our people and our government, and understanding that the American experience is worth fighting for. But also, I'll tell you a little problem about Interior. If you go back to 2008, Interior was the number two revenue generator in our country, right behind, right behind our, our friends of the IRS. In offshore alone, Interior made about $18 billion a year. That's a lot of money. Last year, we made 2.6. We lost $15 billion of revenue a year. So when I came in, and everyone loves our parks, our parks are about $11.5 billion behind in maintenance and repair. Overall, interior that protects our lands and our wildlife refuges, we're about $15 billion a year. So in scale, we would have addressed our entire backlog of maintenance repair and been able to deliver $3 billion of additional investment which we need in one year. So that's the consequence of putting 94% of our offshore off limits. That's the consequence of not harvesting trees on land. That's the consequence of locking and shutting American energy and access and recreation from our lands. And I can tell you, the war on American energy is over. So why does it make a difference? I can tell you in my heart, I never want to see your children and your grandchildren see what I've seen. I fought in a lot of countries. And I have never want to see our children have to go to war, have to go to war over resources we have here. 
Secondly, it is better to produce energy. Isn't this great? Well, I can tell you, I can tell you something. We won. We won. For the right reasons. I can tell you, it's better to produce energy here under reasonable regulation. And I'm a great admirer of Roosevelt. I don't believe that our public lands should be sold or traded or transferred. But we should use our public lands. But we should use our public lands for the benefit of all Americans. It is better to produce energy here under reasonable regulation than watch it be produced overseas with none. And if you want to look at environmental catastrophe, I invite you to look at Saudi Arabia or the Middle East or Africa. America should never produce energy in that way. And lastly, our energy as a nation is a game changer. I'm a geologist. I was taught absolutely we would be out of energy definitively in 2003. Well, God's got a sense of humor. Uh, he gave us fracking. And fracking. And fracking's made a difference because we don't have to be held hostage from foreign entities on our energy. And if we're worried about ICBMs and Iran, we should be. But how do you approach Iran? There's two ways. Militarily, which I do not want to put our children in battle over a resource we have here, or economically. It is better to position ourselves economically for energy dominance. Because with energy dominance, we can control our own future as a country. We can have jobs at home. We can have industry. And if we need to, we can apply leverage overseas. That is America. On our public lands, it's about access. It's about enjoyment. And when you visit parks like Yellowstone, and you go through the Teddy Roosevelt Arch, the Teddy Roosevelt Arch says, for the enjoyment and benefit of the people. What a wonderful idea that our public lands are for our use that access is for all Americans. And who are the stakeholders? Every American citizen is a stakeholder of our public lands. So I say this, I'm an optimist. President Trump wants to make America great again. And I don't think that message is a very bad message. And for those that know Vice President Mike Pence, I call, I call him the rock of Gibraltar when I'm not saying sir. But I'm an optimist. We have been blessed with a great nation. We have been blessed with great resources. We have been blessed with fertile lands. We've been blessed with our ability to practice our faith and the courage to say we are Christians. God bless America. So thanks for showing up. Let's do our duty. Thank you and God bless.